Hey guys, Armor Gun here tonight with another gun upgrade video, this time featuring the Benelli M4 Tactical. So this is a 12 gauge semi-automatic shotgun. This thing packs a lot of wallop and is a super great, super great versatile tool. So we're going to go through some upgrades for setting it up today, just how I run mine. We're going to start that off with a side saddle. I'm going to show you guys a quick little uh, tip on keeping it nice and flexible for your ammo utilization with that thing. Try a couple different optics from an aim point red dot to yes, a trigicon, weird as that is. And then an extended uh, or enlarged bolt release, a foregrip, some rail covers, a weapon mounted light because I'm really starting to believe in those things. And finally a muzzle device. So that's, uh, that's the loadout for today. Let's get at it. And quick shout out to Rhino Metals, their Ironworks line. I freaking love it. I got their tool chest and their safe. Definitely trust my gear to it. All made in the USA by Americans. Great stuff into the Benelli M4 Tactical. All right guys, and first thing starting off, just going to prove this guy clear. So there you guys can see, nice and clear before we're working on it. And this button right here, so I got the bolt to the rear. This button right here is gonna drop that bolt. And when you're working the gun, and you're typically, you know, you're gonna be wrapped around it this way, you're gonna come around, try and, you know, hit that button with your little finger. So that can be tough. You can actually have to put a little bit of pressure on it, sometimes to the point where it's, it's kind of tough. It might be nice to have two fingers on there for example, to, to drop that bolt. So let's toss on real quick, a nice handy little device by RX Arms to get that guy on there moving real slick. So to do that, very simple, and, and it works even with this aftermarket B&T quad rail. Going to loosen your, just enough to get a bit of a gap there. We're gonna throw this paddle on gonna cover that. I'm just gonna push this back on, re-tighten this guy, and that'll lock that right into place. All right, so now you can see that's installed. That's literally all it is. It's so simple. And uh, now when you guys are running it, you can easily get two fingers on there. Don't have to even really think about it or look at it too much. Two fingers, drop it nice and slick. So again, RX arms. Not sure if they're still making them or not, but they are super slick and handy little item. So next up, let's grab the side saddle here. So that's just gonna attach with these little screws right into the top of the shotgun's receiver. So we'll just get those guys up in there. All right, so something really handy to do with this now is you've got a pick rail here, which is really nice. You can mount optics too, which we'll do in a second, but the way these things work is it's actually really slick. It allows you to have your, your gun set up ready to go with multiple loads. So for example, you can have, you know, birdshot here, have those loaded in the first, you know, few slots the opposite way, and then have like one ounce slugs, you know, on the other side. So it just makes you really ready to go. You know, this is locked back. You can literally just pick this up, chuck it in, hit your bolt release, or even come underneath, toss it in, hit your bolt release, and you're ready to go. And it's just really handy having those right there. So that's um, definitely a proponent of a side saddle for that. You can get aluminum ones, you can get uh, polymer ones too. Not really sure where this one came from. It came with my gun set up, but uh, definitely, definitely liking it, definitely leaving it on there. With that done, let's now toss on a little aim point red dot. This is on a low ADM riser. So let's uh, get that on here just nice and Nice and low. I really like red dots on combat shotguns. Any shotgun, actually, it's a lot of fun. It's, it works really well. It's just really fast for that. They're quick for that fast target acquisition. And uh, honestly, for a shotgun, you know, point and blast, it's having a red dot is extremely effective. And if you want something really rugged and durable, and you want to outfit something, you know, your, your Benelli with something, uh, something extra fine, well, it's hard to go wrong with an aim point. So uh, that aside, let's move up a little bit further now. All right, guys, with our sight here figured, and don't forget, this thing does have backup sights as well. So in worst case scenario, it's always nice to be able to have a QD mount with this ADM, because you can just flip it, rip it off, and you're back with your ghost rings. And the Benelli does have really nice iron sights. So anyways, with the optic handled, let's move up and address our light situation. So I'm running an Inforce light here today. Just a little weapon mounted guy, nice and, nice and easy. It's got just a little cookie cap kind of deal at the back. It's basically just pressure sensitive. As soon as you let go, you know, it's, it's off. So um, anyways, nonetheless, when you're running a defensive weapon, really key to have weapon mounted light. 
And this doesn't need to be on there super, like, it doesn't need to be zeroed or need to even be, because this is a bit of a floppy pick rail right here, right? However, that's still fine for weapon mounted light. A laser that you're going to want to have zeroed with your optic or your, your point of your aiming system, that's a little different. But a light really is just an illumination source, so go ahead and mount that wherever you want. For me, again, I'm mounting it on this other uh, rail here, and it's going to be mounted a bit low. That's simply because this is a really thick, really tall rail, and I don't really want to reach my thumb all the way up here. The way I'm going to have this thing set up, I'm going to be a little bit lower. This is just going to be my preferred spot. So again, you guys can do whatever you want, but uh, that's how I'm going to lay it out. So let's uh, let's get into that. I'm going to throw because my hand's going to be again right up in here when I'm going to put my little stubby foregrip on here. So I'm going to put rail covers right down here. All right, so we got that guy down there. That's nice. Now let's throw on our little stubby vertical grip. This is just a uh, Tapco. I more so chose it because the aesthetic of the grip here matches the aesthetic on the factory Benelli grip quite nicely. So just in keeping with that, now I'm gonna position that right in behind my, uh, my rail cover that I threw on here. All right guys, so now you can see how well that works in there. So it's just allows you to have, to, like, this is not a pump shotgun, but you can, you can grab it and hold it like that. But honestly, it's nice just to get your hand in there and have an index on a point that's gonna be getting convenient to hold, aim, sturdy the rifle, and access any controls you have. So for me, my light's right here, and that's really easy to actuate. So that's uh, that's gonna be a good get her done for me. All right, guys, that's looking pretty pretty darn good. So let's move up a little bit further now to the muzzle. And uh, now 12 gauge is get a bit of a bit of a beast of a round. Um, of course, it's available in a ton of different loadings, and shooting something like, you know, birdshot is gonna feel way different than you know, double up buck or a one ounce slug. So again, the recoil is, is pretty tamed, especially given this is a semi-automatic system and the Argo gas system in here does a pretty good job of regulating that as well. So you don't get too much punch all the time. Uh, nonetheless, you can add a muzzle brake of sorts to the thing. This is kind of a combination muzzle device here with a bit of a breacher at the front. And all these little ports here are going to uh, just help you out with the recoil. They minimize some of that recoil as we go on. So that's just gonna thread in and uh, well, that's about it. There we go. Lots of different muzzle brakes out there for you guys to choose. Set it up to your preference. But uh, there we go, guys. That's uh, <laughs> that's a pretty slick little unit. Of course, the tactical model has the collapsible stock. So really nice, really nice system right there. And now that I'm actually into this thing, I'm feeling that this actually isn't a very good spot for the light. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and choke this back a little bit. Put my light right here because I'm already feeling like you know what, my, my natural hand position is gonna to wanna to rest right up here, right in line with that guy. So I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, there we go. So now I got this back here and this is actually feeling, feeling perfect. So that's, that's really nice guys. And uh, always keep an open mind with your builds. All this pick rail is meant to give you flexibility to move stuff around and uh, you know, mix it up once in a while. See what's gonna work better for you guys. Again, this is all about upgrading and uh, customizing your rifles to your preference. So definitely want to go ahead and do that. You can, you can <laughs> it's actually crazy how much uh, influence you have over the ergonomics and, and layout of modern firearms. It's actually really great. So go ahead and take advantage of all that. And now finally, let's, uh, let's pop on this aim point or this, this ACOG because, well, I did it for an Instagram post last summer and it actually got a lot of, uh, a lot of hits. And the reason I did it was because like, some of these modern shotguns, I mean, this is an ACOG, so we're still only talking 3.5 power magnification. Nothing crazy. And basically, a lot of these shotguns, you know, they are, they are pretty capable of some accuracy. And for just a simple magnified optic, the ACOG is actually a really nice, again, dummy-proof system. It's fiber optic sight. you got illuminated reticle, no batteries, nothing. You're just ready to go. And again, only 3.5 times magnification, so it's actually pretty, pretty solid. And there is a provision to mount a red dot RMR on top of these, so you can still be pretty versatile. Now, with the eye relief, this doesn't work when the stock is all the way deployed. It's just too far. But you can, uh, if, you're, if you're running body armor or you're, you know, CQB, and you're really choked up on this thing, then it's going to work for you. For me, it was honestly just a fun experiment, and it can be fun to run this thing actually sometime with some targets and, and actually a bit of a scenario with it to actually see how usable something like this would be. But uh, again, you never know. You're only gonna be using this thing inside of, you know, really 25 yards with buckshot 
things like that. Maybe out to 100 if you're going to use slugs, but honestly, it's it's probably just it's probably just me having fun with a gun and taking a bit of creative license with it. And probably not something super practical for me for everyday use. I would run I would run an aim point on here, basically 6.9 days of the week, just leaving a bit of time on Sunday to have some fun with it. So uh, otherwise, guys, that's the the gun tonight. Again, love that little. Love that little quick release lever there. And as an added bonus for you guys, Keltec KSG. Only a single shot, or not a single shot, a pump action. Man, this thing is, this thing is that classic, you know, just badass shotgun. So again, got an EOTech thrown up on here. Just a good, good time, good time. I'm gonna be running this gun a lot more real soon here. We're gonna have some videos out on that, so should be a good time. Anyways, thanks a ton guys. Appreciate the views as always. If you guys want to support the channel, please check me out on Patreon. I definitely make time to chat with my patrons on usually Sunday afternoons. I reserve a bit of a block of time to answer any questions, just talk shop, whatever you guys want to do. But if you guys show the channel that love, make that little contribution, I will uh, definitely give back. And again, those contributions go towards things like camera, better lighting, which is actually helping make this video possible in the evening time. I'm not relying on daylight and uh, <laughs> ammunition, all the stuff. So. Uh, it doesn't just sit around here. We do do more shooting videos and the more I can afford to run through these guns, the more I will. So with that, thanks a ton guys. Arm and gun out.